the five biggest mistakes I made in finding my purpose. Welcome back. My name is Sahara Rose. I am the best selling author of Discover Your Dharma, host of the Highest Self podcast. And in this video, I'm going to get real with you on some of the biggest mistakes I made in finding my purpose because truthfully, it wasn't always an easy path. And while I don't regret anything because it all brought me to this moment right now, there were definitely some things I could have done differently to make the journey a lot more smoother, easier, and have more trust along the way. And that's what I'm going to be sharing with you in today's video. So a little bit about my journey. When I was going through health challenges at age 21 years old, I discovered Ayurveda, the world's oldest health system and sister science of yoga based on the mind-body connection and healed my body through it. So naturally I wanted to share it with the world. And I decided that I would do so through a book. I've always loved to write. And I had this idea of writing this book to bring Ayurveda to other millennials who suffered from hormonal imbalances and digestive issues like me. And I told my parents, you know what, I'm going to write this book on Ayurveda. And they were like, are you crazy? You're not a doctor. How are you going to make money doing that? What's, what's your, no, no, no. You need to get a normal, stable job. This is delusional. This is some hippie shit. You're never going to be able to make money doing this. Forget about it. And I was very confused at this time of my life because I really deeply saw myself writing this book and sharing this message with the world but also I didn't know if they were right. If I was delusional, if I was crazy, if it was going to be so risky and I would regret not spending these years cultivating a more stable job. So I learned some things along the way. And just to let you know, I've written three books at this point. So I think you know where the story goes. So the first big mistake I made was asking people for advice who are not living their purposes. You see, the thing is most of us go through life asking people for advice. What should I wear? Should I call him back? What should I major in? What job should I get? What should I do about the situation? While it is helpful to have coaches and mentors, most of us are asking these questions from people who have not done these things themselves. Sure, asking someone what color to paint in your room could be helpful, but asking someone who is not living their purpose what your purpose is, that, my friend, is what is delusional. So here I was asking all these people what I should do with my life instead of asking myself. And the truth is most of us are afraid of our own inner voice. We don't trust our intuition. We feel like we don't know what's right for us. So I remember I would ask everyone I would meet, do you know what my purpose is? As if for some reason God told them and not me, you know? So when I would ask my parents, well, do you think I could write this book or this? Of course, they're going to say no, because they've never seen anyone do this thing before. However, ask anyone who is living their purpose, should I give this a try? And regardless of what their purpose is, even if it's totally different from yours, they will always tell you a resounding yes. Because the truth is the number one regret of the dying, which you can see in the book, the top regrets of the dying, is I wish I lived my purpose. So I don't want you to live with this regret. And that was the realization I had that if I don't even give this thing a shot, I will forever wonder what could have happened. And in fact, I would have been resentful for my parents for not letting me live my purpose. Whereas the truth is no one has to let you live your purpose. It's something you decide for yourself. So don't ask people for advice whose life you would not want to emulate. And definitely don't ask people for advice on living your purpose who are not living theirs. In fact, something I suggest in my book, Discover Your Dharma, is to go on an advice detox. Don't ask people for advice on anything about anyone. Just learn to cultivate your own intuitive guidance. Don't be like, what brand of orange juice should I get? Or where should I buy this dress from? Ask yourself, cultivate discernment. Because when you cultivate discernment, you cultivate more clarity, more intuition, and more courage, which are necessary skills and assets to have to be living your purpose. So I am so grateful for my journey and my parents not believing in me because that helped me believe in myself. Biggest mistake I made, number two, thinking about money first. So whether it was starting a skincare line or getting a certain job, I would always begin to think about, okay, well, how much money could I make doing this? Sound familiar? We live in a system that trains us to think this way. From a young age, we're taught time is money. So if you're going to be putting your time into something, get the max amount of money at any means possible. 
Who cares if you don't like it? Who cares if it's burning you out? Make that money. That's what we're taught. However, we also see prominent examples of some of the richest people in the world who are the most unhappy. So why are we thinking about money first when we know that money is not what is going to bring us fulfillment? Yes, abundance is a powerful tool. However, thinking about money before your purpose is never going to bring you true abundance. Because the truth is abundance is based off of you offering value in the way that only you can. So if you think about economics, we have supply over demand. The supply of you living your dharma, your soul's purpose is one, you. You are the only person who can live your purpose in the way that you are. You being yourself is irreplaceable. So no one can replace me in the way that I am sharing because it is coming through my vessel. Whereas if I just went and got the job as the real estate agent or whatever else, I could have been replaceable because I wasn't living my dharma. I was just doing what I was told. So therefore, I am able to create more abundance for myself through living my purpose because the supply is one and the demand is infinite because there are infinite number of people whose lives you can benefit from you living your dharma. So instead of having the story that I either can do what I love or make money, but it can't be both, drop that story and realize your highest form of abundance will come when you are in alignment with your purpose. Big mistake number three, feeling like I wasn't enough to live my purpose. So we all have stories in our heads. I am not old enough, young enough, educated enough, experienced enough, pretty enough, fit enough. Whatever it is, the story that is telling you, you aren't blank enough to be living your purpose. What is yours? So mine was, well, because I'm not a doctor, I can't write a book on Ayurveda. Who's going to listen to me? But the truth is you being you with your flaws, I don't even want to call them flaws because they're aspects that make you your own unique form of perfection. That is what is going to allow you to connect with the very people you are meant to connect with. So in my own journey, I was not a doctor. I was someone who went through health issues and healed myself. So no, I don't know every medical term, but I do know what allowed me to live this radiant life that I'm able to have the energy to even be able to share this without being on dozens of prescription medications. So there are other people who can benefit from my story, my experience, what I have gone through. So you and your story, maybe you feel ashamed about an aspect of your past, or maybe you feel like your former job is random and it's not interconnected, or you missed your boat and you're too old or you're too young or whatever it is. That's actually your sweet spot right there. That is what is going to help your people find you. Because I'm sure there are other people who also feel like they are too young to have a purpose or too old to have a purpose or not educated enough to have a purpose or didn't have the right experience or worked a corporate job for a long time or don't feel special. The exact same stories you are telling yourself will be stories that you help other people go through. So trust that the very things that make you feel like you are not enough are what make you exactly what you are meant to be to live your purpose. Number four biggest mistake, trying to figure out my purpose first before taking action. So I had this idea that I would figure out all of the stages of my purpose and then I would take action because I didn't want to waste energy doing something that I wasn't sure if it would work out, right? Sound familiar? Again, we're trained this way. We're trained to go to school. We're trained to have a plan. We're trained to stick to the agenda. And in fact, I see this all the time with my students. They want to know what's happening next. But the truth is life is unknown. If there's anything we've learned in the past year, life is full of uncertainty. And the more that we can step into that, And the more that we can understand that our purpose will be something so much greater than us if we can give up our tight grip of control, the more we can be delighted by the surprises that the universe is waiting to bestow us. So it's like riding a roller coaster. You can ride a roller coaster two ways. The first way is gripping onto the edge of the seat and trying to figure out how many turns you're gonna make until you get off. And the second is putting your hands in the air and having fun along the way. 
You're going to go through the exact same roller coaster race, but do you want to go through it with joy or do you want to go through it with control and fear? And this is what living your Dharma is all about. You're never going to figure out your way to your Dharma because Dharma is not the work of the mind. Your mind did not create your Dharma, your soul did. So we can try to think it through, but we're never going to know things that we will only know through taking action. Because I may have this idea of what I think my dharma is going to be, but it's only until I put myself in the game that I get that feedback to see, oh, this is what it's actually like. So don't wait until you have the 10-step strategy with the money-back guarantee to finally take action on your dharma. Begin taking action and let that feedback redirect you. And number five, wasting my time trying to explain my dharma rather than living it. You see, I spent a lot of time trying to explain and explain to my parents why they should believe in me and love my book and know that I was going to make it and give me that pat on the back and tell me that I'm good enough and give me that gold star. And that didn't even happen. And all of that time that I wasted trying to explain to them, I could have actually put that energy towards doing my dharma. So when I finally had that revelation of instead of trying to write all these texts, I'm going to put that energy towards writing my book and show them from my action. So now, of course, they believe in me because I did the damn thing rather than trying to explain the damn thing. So whatever energy you're putting towards explaining yourself and having other people believe in you, give that belief to yourself. No one needs to approve of you. Only you need to approve of yourself. And this is part of the journey of living our dharmas. We're not always going to be liked by other people. They're not always going to see the light in us and see our intention. And that's okay. That's not our job. We can't stop what we are doing to make sure everyone believes in us. We must believe in ourselves and let that be our guiding light forward. Because your dharma is going to require all of you. And if you are dispersing your energy, trying to help everyone else see you, you're not going to really see yourself. So these are the five biggest mistakes I made. I hope you don't make them. And even if you do, we'll give you more feedback towards your dharma. So no regrets. But if you are in those beginning stages, I have so much support for you from tips and tricks that I have learned and developed and actually created into a strategy to help you move from confusion to clarity on your soul's purpose in just 21 days. So I invite you to join me in my 21 day dharma discovery journey, which is a step-by-step -step process in just 10 minutes minutes a day with guided questions, prompts, interviews, and so much more to help you finally take action on your purpose. If you're interested in learning more, head over to the link below to join me. And I'm so excited to see you inside. I hope you enjoyed this episode. Share with me your biggest takeaway. What are some of the biggest mistakes you have made? I'm curious to know. And be sure to like and subscribe if you enjoyed this episode. And I'll see you guys on the next one. Namaste.